One of the key results when we're dealing with linear regression models is that the expected value of the mean squared error is equal to sigma squared, where sigma squared is the variance of the random error terms. Now to demonstrate that the expected value of the mean squared error is sigma squared, I'm going to show that the expected value of the sums of squares error is n minus 2 times sigma squared. And then since mean squared error for the simple linear regression model is equal to the sum of squares error divided by n minus 2, it follows immediately then as a consequence of, of that, those definitions that the expected value of the mean squared error is sigma squared. Now remember what our model is. Our model, the simple linear regression model, is y i equal beta 0 plus beta 1 times x i plus epsilon sub i. Now those are model parameters, beta 0 and beta 1. We fit that linear regression model and we get an estimated regression line and we denote that y i hat equals b0 plus b1 times x sub i where the b0 and b1 are what we call estimators of the parameters beta 0 and beta 1. Now one other thing I want you to remember is this, this thing called the residual. The ith residual e sub i is equal to the difference between the observed value and the fitted value and we denote that, of course, yi minus yi hat. So we can go through the arithmetic and we can express these residuals, the ith residual, in a couple of different ways. One of which you see here, yi minus um, y bar minus b1 times the quantity xi minus x bar. Now again, we know what our model is, and we know if we evaluate that model at the point x bar, y bar, with the result would be y bar is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 times x bar plus whatever the random error term is at that point. We'll just denote that epsilon bar, so we can in fact write the difference between yi and y bar, as you see here on the screen. And that's going to be important. All of this is just arithmetic, really, and it'll take you take you a little time to wade through it all, but I've tried to write out each individual step, so if you spend some time with it, I think you'll be successful in being able to follow it through. And of course, if you have any questions, you can certainly uh, send them my way, and I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, the bottom line is we're going to work with this thing called e sub i, and e sub i can be written, as you see here on the last line of page 1. Now that looks like one term minus another term. And so we're going to square both sides. And you know the quadratic, uh, how quadratics work. When we take a minus b quantity squared, we get a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. And, and that's where we start at the top of page 2 here. And the sum of these uh, residual squared is in fact, the definition of the sum of squares error. So in order to demonstrate that the expected value of the sum of squares error is equal to n minus 2 times sigma squared, I'm just going to show you, and, and there's a lot of steps here, but I'm going to show you that the expected value of the sum of these residual squared is equal to n minus 2 times sigma squared. And I'm going to do that by examining pieces. Here's this first term. I'm going to examine it. Here's the second term. I'm going to examine it. And here's the third term. And I'm going to examine it. And then I'm going to pull them all together at the end here. And again, you can go through all this at your uh, convenience, but it is a very important result. And it does give you a, an opportunity to remember some of the basics that you learned in your statistics first statistics course. So let's take a look at the first term. The expected value of the sum of the differences of epsilon i minus epsilon bar squared. And we can write all this out again using the notion of a minus b quantity squared. We, we partition, we break that out into uh, the expected value of, of, of three individual terms, remembering that expectations of what we call a linear operator, that is the expected value of a sum is the sum of the expected values, the expected value of a difference is equal to the difference of the expected values, blah, blah, blah. So let's take a look at the first term. We want to find the expected value of the epsilon sub i squared.
Now here's another important reminder from statistics, your basic statistics course. You know the definition of the variance of a random variable, but there's also an extraordinarily important theorem that I like to show uh, students with whom I work in, uh, in stats courses to be true, and that is the variance of a random variable can also be expressed as the expected value of that random variable squared minus the expected value of that random variable quantity squared. And I'm going to use that a couple of times here. Now, for example then, if I take a look at the variance of the epsilon uh, sub i, I know what that is in terms of that theorem, which means then that I can write the expected value of the epsilon sub i squared as the variance plus this expected value of the epsilon sub i quantity squared. Now we've denoted the variance of the random quantity epsilon sub i to be sigma squared. We have stipulated that the expected value of those random error terms is zero, so that first part falls apart. That first result falls apart quite nicely. The expected value of the epsilon sub i squared is equal to sigma squared. Now what about the expected value of the epsilon bar squared? Well, keep in mind that that then also, by virtue of this theorem, can be written as the variance of epsilon bar plus the expected value of epsilon bar quantity squared. Now, epsilon bar, remember when you, when you learned about the variance of x bar, the sample mean? It was equal to the variance of the population that you're sampling from divided by n. And it's the same thing here. The variance of epsilon bar is the variance of the population that you're pulling these random error terms that you're averaging from, and that is sigma squared, and then you need to divide it by n. And of course, the expected value of epsilon bar, we've assumed you know, it's just an epsilon value, and the expected value of epsilon bar is zero. So we know then that we can combine those two results, and the bottom line is that for the first term that we're dealing with here, the expected value of the sum of the epsilon i minus epsilon bar quantity squared can be written as n minus 1 times sigma squared. Now let's examine that second term. The second term, the expected value as you see written here. Now look, B1 can be written out a number of different ways. The bottom line is that B1 is a linear combination of the y sub i, where the multiplier, this thing I call ki, is this crazy looking expression here. And we're going to see that a number of different, ti different times and in different places throughout the course. And of course, we recall what our model is. We know then that if B1 can be written as the sum of the k sub i times yi, and yi is our model, beta 0 plus beta 1 times xi plus epsilon i, then we can write B1 in a couple of different ways. Now, some of these results are expressed for you on page 42 of our textbook. I'd ask you to look at them. You can go through the proofs of them. The bottom line is we can write B1 as beta 1 plus the sum of this multiplying term, the ki, times the epsilon sub i. So then the expected value of that second term in the sum of the e sub i squares, which is, you know, going back to page 1, can be written as you see here. And again, I'm not going to go over every little detail here, but when we plug those values back in and we remember a few things that you know fall out from our assumptions. For example, we know that epsilon bar is equal to zero because we know that epsilon bar is the sum of the epsilon sub i's divided by n and the sum of the epsilons uh, is you know going to be equal to zero. Um, so we know that epsilon bar is also equal to zero and we can you know follow all this arithmetic through and the punchline is that the expected value of the epsilon sub i squared is equal to sigma squared and then we can take a look at the third term 
and the third term can be written the expected value of uh, b1 minus beta 1 squared plus the sum of the x sub i's minus x bar. Now remember, the, the x's are just numbers. So we know that the expected value of a constant, a number, times some random quantity, we can pull the constant out, which is what I've done here, and we can write the expected value of b1 minus beta 1 quantity squared times this sum as this sum times the expected value of b1 minus beta 1 squared. Now, we note that um, the expected value of b1 minus beta 1 squared is the definition of the variance of b. That we go back to how the variance of a random variable is defined, and it says it's the difference between the quantity that the random variable takes on minus its mean. Well, we know that the expected value of b1 is beta 1. That is, it is an unbiased estimator. So we can, you know, show that easily, and the authors have done that on uh, on page 43 of our our textbook. Now, the other thing that we can uh, learn from looking at that is that uh, the variance of b1 is sigma squared divided by the sum of the x sub i minus x bar quantity squared. Again, that's all written out for you on page 43. The punchline is the expected value of this term is sigma squared. Now, just combine all these things. And so we got the first terms, expectation, the second terms, the third terms, add them up, and we're done. So the key result here is that um, you know the expected value of mean squared error really is sigma squared. There's no doubt about it. Now there is another way to approach this, and it relies on some understanding of the of the uh, chi squared distribution, which we're we're not in a position yet to uh, to look at that. But if you recognize that these quadratic forms have uh, chi squared distributions, then this result is a little easier to come by. But I think that this was a great way to do some review. I hope that you take the time to look through the write-up that I've provided here. And I hope you come away with an understanding that, yes, indeed, the expected value of the mean squared error is sigma squared, because that is going to be a very important result for us as we make our way through the analysis of our linear regression models.